Hi, my name is Henry Segerman. This is Spherical Magnet Buckyball Scaffold. So this comes out of work I've been doing uh, with a student of mine, Rosa Zwyer, on these uh, spherical magnets. So you've probably seen these before. Um, these are little spherical neodymium magnets, and you can build various structures with these. So one of the things that people like to build are uh, polyhedra. So here's, here's an icosahedron. And we're interested in the question, uh, what polyhedra can you build and what, what polyhedra don't seem to be possible to build? So obviously here's an icosahedron. Um, as far as we know, nobody's been able to make uh, a dodecahedron. So just to be clear, um, so this looks very much like a dodecahedron. It's got pentagonal faces, it's got 12 of them. Um, but we would say uh, when, you're, when you want to build a polyhedron, what you should be doing is uh, each vertex of the polyhedron should be represented by exactly one spherical magnet and uh, each edge of the polyhedron should be where two of those magnets touch each other. And this has way too many magnets. This has got three magnets for each uh, vertex. So, so we would say if you're going to build a, a dodecahedron, you should, you should make it out of exactly 20 magnets uh, for corresponding to the 20 vertices of the dodecahedron. So we'd say this, this is really a model of the, the cantillated dodecahedron. So what's cantillation? So um, this is where you take a, a polyhedron and you shave off all of the, the edges and the vertices. So there's sort of two pentagonal faces here and you chop off the edge in between them and you get this extra square face and you also get these triangular faces where the vertices used to be. Um, so uh, as I say, nobody seems to be able to do a dodecahedron with only uh, 20 magnets and we can't do a dodecahedron either, even if we cheat using 3D printing but we can do um, a buckyball. So uh, what's a buckyball? It's this uh, sort of soccer ball uh, polyhedron. It's got uh, 12, pentagon, uh, 12 pentagonal faces and uh, 20 hexagonal faces. So how does uh, this scaffold work? Um, so it's a sphere with dents in the right places and you can put uh, the magnets uh, into those dents and it gives it just enough structure uh, that you can build it. Um, this is pretty good evidence to us, at least, that uh, it's just impossible to do this uh, freestanding without the scaffolding. As this is very, very fragile, um, I'll show you uh, at the end of the video what happens when you, when you start nudging it a little bit. Uh, it's, it's very prone to, to collapse into, um, into something else. It's also very difficult to make. Um, it's almost impossible to make using only two hands, uh, but it's not so bad if you've got uh, four hands or more. So, so what's sort of the, the problem with this whole endeavor is um, you know where the magnets are supposed to go on a polyhedron, but you don't know which direction the poles are supposed to be pointing. So um, most things that people make, um, uh, well, the usual way that you make things is you start by building loops. So well, like, like this loop here, it's very stable, it's very happy. Um, so the way that, that uh, you build uh, this cantillated dodecahedron, each uh, pentagon, there's a, a loop of of five magnets, so you start by building 12 pentagons, and then you slot them together. So uh, each pentagon is going around in a loop. Uh, it turns out that each vertex, or each triangle here, is going around in a loop in the opposite direction. And then what's happening on these square faces is you have this sort of saddle behavior, where two of the poles point in and two of them point outwards. And somehow that's where things are the least stable. Um, with the, these square saddles, it's not so bad, and this is pretty, pretty good. Um, here it's the same kind of thing. Each pentagon is going around in a loop, um, but then the hexagons uh, are where the saddles are. So uh, sort of a triple saddle, you have three poles pointing inwards and three pointing outwards, and then just, this is just much less stable and doesn't work so well. Um, so um, what do you get in uh, the, uh, the model if you buy it from Shapeways? So, so these two are uh, the same size in here. Um, in, the, in the file from Shapeways, I've actually put three slightly different sizes uh, into the file. Um, so we discovered that um, even uh, uh, magnets that are nom nominally uh, the same size as each other, actually, there's, there's slight differences. So these are nominally five millimeters, um, but uh, different magnets, uh, which were nominally also five millimeters uh, diameter, um, didn't work so well. So if the magnet's too big, then it sort of bulges out and becomes even less stable. And then if they're a little bit too small, then, then it works very well, they're, they're stable, but there's sort of gaps in between the magnets, so, so it, doesn't, um, it doesn't look as good. Um, so there's three slightly different sizes which should hopefully um, work for 
um, anything, any, any set of magnets that are nominally somewhere between 5 millimeters and 4.8 uh, millimeters. Um, so there you go, this is uh, the spherical magnet buckyball scaffold. Um, so now I'll show you what happens uh, when you play with these just a little too much.